welcome back to my channel. My name is Kelsey and I'm here today to do my September wrap up. So September was a really great reading month for me. I caught up on a lot of my goals. I read quite a few things and I say things on purpose. <laughs> a lot of the things I read was for content. What that means for me is that I don't have to spend too much time in my wrap up, which is arguably one of my least favorite videos to film. But let's get into it right away with the statistics, which is my favorite part to film and hopefully your favorite part to watch. I love statistics, so I hope everybody feels the same. In the month of September, I read 14 things and around four or six of them, I think, were short stories that are part of a collection and I'll talk about them when we get there. That's why I'm not saying books because they were separate short stories, so they weren't over 100 pages, let's say. That came out to a total of 4,759 pages, which is roughly 159 pages per day, well above my 100 pages per day average, which I love. And then some of these books were listened to on audio and they came out to a total of 84 hours. Now let's get into those readings. So I had a really great month. I read three five-star books, five four-star books, five three-star books, zero two-star books, and one one-star short story. And that made the average come out to a 3.79 stars. Fantastic, above the three star average. I love that, it means I had a great reading month. In regards to the author identity, we had eight books written by female authors and six books written by male authors. The age range was entirely dominated by adult books this month. I read 13 of those and I did read one middle grade novel. I read four audiobooks, six ebooks, and four physical books. So let's get into it. We'll start off by the things I read for content. So what this means is that there is somewhere else on my channel where you can go and get my full in-depth thoughts. So we'll start off with the two Professor Kelsey's Book Club books I read this month. So I was behind because of my vacation for the August book, which was The Mountain in the Sea by Ray Naylor. And then our September book was Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. The Professor Kelsey's Book Club is a book club on my channel where I do live streams every month with my friends, Justin and Bobby. We read these two books these past two months so if you want our full in-depth thoughts you can go check out those videos the next series in the rick riordan along with me and my friend honani have started we are reading the magnus chase series so i vlog for magnus chase and the sword of summer will also be linked up above i'm really enjoying this series so far so that was a fun vlog to film because i end up really really liking this first book then i also have a video for rouge by mona awad this was an upcoming anticipated book for me and I went to the signing and everything I met Mona Awad it was really fun time of this month I can't even believe how fast September passed because like I feel like this was so long ago yet it was this month and if you would like to see in-depth thoughts again I will leave this link up above as well and then another thing I read for content was The Fragile Threads of Power by V.E. Schwab I obviously adored this V.E. Schwab is my favorite author I will talk about the last two books in the A Darker Shade of Magic series um, in this wrap-up but just so it's part of the content that you can watch I just put up the vlog for this last week if you want to see my thoughts on this I although I think they're, they're pretty obvious but if you would like to see my thoughts on that I will also leave a link to that vlog so let's get into the rest of the stuff, shall we? So this month, my friend Danny over at Current Chapter, that's her booktube channel, launched her Patreon and along with that came the first book club book pick. For this one, Danny decided to read the Far Reaches, like, collection of short stories. So I read all six of them and let's get into it. First part of the Far Reaches trilogy is How It Unfolds by James S.A. Corey. If you know anything about me, you know that I do not like James S.A. Corey. I'll start it off right there. Me and James are not friends, but I decided to give him a chance. Like his story was part of the collection. I'm like, how bad can a short story be? So obviously I'm not gonna get too much into the synopsises, but I will try to summarize them in like one sentence the best I can. How It Unfolds is essentially about a group of astronauts who are cloned in many ways and off to populate or see if they could populate different parts of the solar system, the galaxy, all of that. Once again, I am asking myself to stop giving James S.A. Corey a chance because every male character that they write is insufferable and they have no other motivation besides pursuing a woman that does not want them. And maybe in this book it was supposed to be romantic because it's over the course of many clone variations of them, but I don't see it. I did not find it desirable. I found it annoying and I gave it one star. This is my one star review of the month. I don't think I will be giving James S.A. Corey a chance in the near future at any point. The next short story in this collection was Void by Veronica Roth. Veronica Roth is the writer of the Divergent series. So because the Divergent series had such a like prominent 
part of my childhood. I like to give her short stories a chance, her other works a chance, but her short stories always kind of fall like within the three star range and that's definitely where this one fell. So the premise of this is that it takes place on a like luxury spaceship. A murder happens on the spaceship and one of the workers, because they don't have like a detective force or a police force, is kind of tasked with solving the murder. So this was a really interesting story because the premise alone is I think really interesting and interesting enough to explore. And I could definitely say that I was shocked by the plot twist. I really thought it was going to be someone else that was the murderer, but I did have some trouble being engaged with the story. At only 50 pages, I really feel like a short story should be able to grab you and like punch you in the gut. Part of this I think has to do with our main character who definitely had a lot of like profound thoughts of isolation and like being on a spaceship but she was completely bland of personality and I just felt like meh about it so I ended up giving this three stars. The next short story was The Long Game by Anne Leckie and this was a really cute short story that involved a like race of alien species and this species of alien is kind of being overlooked by human overlords in a sense and one little alien kind of sets out on a journey to understand why their people are dying and how they can possibly stop it. So this was a really enjoyable short story about this alien species primarily following a sentient alien slug who is determined to save their species and make sure that they live on their planet for a really long time. Lucky in this short story is definitely tackling themes of human greed, capitalism, and colonialism through the eyes of this alien slug who has a very innocent mind so this worked and also didn't work for me because i do think that this novel is doing what it wants to do and is obvious about it but i feel like this lacked a bit to make it feel really memorable for me but i definitely remember the slug i definitely remember thinking that this character was so sweet and i loved its ambitions but this ended up just being a 3.5 stars for me then we had falling bodies by rebecca roanhorse i love rebecca roanhorse every short story i've read from her i've absolutely adored and this was no different so falling bodies basically follows a young human boy who was adopted taken in abducted by an alien race and raised by this alien race and he is going to a human university on earth in order to like adapt to human life and see how we live. Like usual Rebecca Roanhorse did not disappoint me with this short story. I don't know how she does it but she pulls me in every time in so few pages and is masterful at making me care about this plot. The story has a really important message and really dives into indigenous issues, specifically the forced removal of indigenous children from their homes and communities. Are the themes a little obvious at times and kind of shoved into your face? Yes, but I do think that this is extremely intentional and done really well despite that. The ending is a little shocking and I think you'll either like it or you'll hate it, but I never once read a short story from her that did not demonstrate these like really shocking things. I loved it, gave it four stars, definitely a short story that I think everyone should read. Then the penultimate story of this collection was Just Over Jupiter's Reach, Just Out of Jupiter's Reach by Nettie Okorafor and I really really like this one. So the basic premise is that a group of people are selected to take part of this like space program and they are put on these ships that are sentient and adapt to whatever the astronaut driving them wants or wills within it and then they are set to travel in these ships alone except for one time where they are able to meet with the other astronauts and like spend a week vacation kind of together. Like I said, I absolutely love the story. Okorafor has such an interesting way with creating engaging and interesting short fiction. It's a skill and I don't know how she does it. There were elements of the story that I do see could be a little confusing, but I think she still does a good job at explaining these things in a way that you are still able to visualize them while, while reading. There are two moments in the story that I won't get into for spoiler reasons that I feel like did fall into the trap of this story being too short to explain and that's why I could not give this the five stars overall that I think the writing deserves but overall this was a beautifully written story and definitely one of the stronger ones in the collection in my opinion. <laughs> And then finally, the last short story I read for this collection was Slow Time Between the Stars by John Scalzi. This is a very reflective novel that follows an artificial intelligence sent away from Earth by humans to explore different galaxies in order to find a home that humans can then move to and live on. So as the title implies, this was a really slow 
story to read but i found it to be also quite calming in a way i wasn't particularly frustrated by the pacing of the novel and i found that it really matches the a the calmness of the ai character it's definitely a look and a contemplation of our own place in the universe and whether or not we have a right to have one at all i really liked how scalzi grappled with this idea through an ai voice and i definitely think the melancholic ending was fascinating and fitting and having not read from scalzi before this definitely surprised me because i just was wasn't sure what I was gonna get when I started reading it. So this was really good. I gave it 3.5 stars, but I definitely had others in the collection that I preferred more. So now that we're done with all those short stories, I still have three books left to talk about, two of which are from the same series. I think you could guess what it is. I finished my third reread of the A Darker Shade of Magic trilogy in order to prepare myself for the Fragile Threads of Power reading vlog that I did. So I won't spend too much time with these books because obviously I love them. If you didn't know what the A Darker Shade of Magic series is, it basically follows a world where there are four parallel Londons. There is Black London where it is desolate, magic has taken over, and there is almost nothing left. The world is kind of burnt to crisp. After that, we have White London. White London is the closest to Black London, so magic is definitely taking over. It's toxic from the inside out. Then we have Red London, where magic is absolutely thriving. Magicians run amok, and that is where our main character Tell is from. And then there is Grey London. Grey London is basically our London. Magic is kind of a fantasy, a silly little thing and nobody in our London really knows how to utilize magic or even realizes it exists. One magician named Kel is an Antarian. He is able to travel between all four Londons and while he is there to form communication between the London's leaders. He also has a sneaky little habit of exchanging things between the worlds. One day that catches up to him in a terrible way because he receives something from Black London and the story takes off from there. The second book really opens the world up in a larger way. You can definitely tell that the A Darker Shade of Magic book was its own thing until V.E. Schwab got the contract to write the rest of the series. A Gathering of Shadows ties the first book and the last book together in, I think, an obvious way, but I still really loved it. This story also introduces us to new characters. It opens up the world in a way as well because we're introduced to two other kingdoms that partake in the tournament that happens within this plot. I obviously loved it. Gave it five stars. Um, I know and acknowledge that this is probably the weaker one in the series, but I think if you're a fan of the series, this one's still good. And if you like trials and like tournaments and magical stuff, this is the one for you. And then the final book, A Conjuring of Light, I think goes balls to the wall with plot points, with developments, with tearjerkers. I cried reading this book, as you can see here. Um, I just absolutely adored this final book, it opens up moments between characters that I think is really, really, really important and ties the entire story together in such a way that makes sense. Nothing feels unnecessary in this book. V Schwab really goes there with her characters and she's not afraid to do anything. And I think that when I had read this the first time, it destroyed me. When I read it the second time, destroyed me third time. I could see how she was already planning this and I think she's such a clever person. Obviously, I love this. This is probably my favorite one in the series just because I love finales, especially when they're done right and V.E. Schwab does them right. So obviously, this was the other five star of the month as well. And then we're going to end this on a disappointing note a little bit. I picked up The Shadow Rising by Robert Jordan this month as well. This is the fourth book in the Wheel of Time series and the Wheel of Time series basically follows this Aes Sedai and they are kind of like the witches of this world who goes to a small town called Edmunds Field and finds four kids that are pretty connected to the like overruling magic in this world. She kind of takes them with her on this journey in order to protect them from the magic and kind of raise them in a way so that they don't succumb to the evil part of the magic, especially the boys. Moraine, the Aes Sedai, is specifically looking for the new dragon reborn. Every time the dragon is reborn, they succumb to darker magic. So Moraine's idea is that if she raises these kids or like protects them in a specific way they won't necessarily fall to the dark side like the previous dragon reborn this book was a little disappointing for me because i have enjoyed the first two books in this series and i find this one and the third book that i read a couple of months ago have both kind of been disappointments because robert jordan i personally don't feel needed to write this many books so i'm really trying to find the beauty of this series as i'm reading it but i always find this a chore to read especially in the beginning chapters by the end i really do understand what happens overall in the book and how it relates to the rest of the series but as it's happening 
I cannot be more confused. I feel like so much happened, yet so little. And I feel like this is mostly due to the fact that Jordan roams in circles trying to explain things. He focuses so much on the dynamics and gender roles between his main characters that I find the most interesting aspects of his plot and world building really gets lost. I won't even begin to talk about how irritating his main characters are when it comes to these gender roles and relationships and understanding the other sex because this 900 plus page book could have easily been 600 if all that uselessness had been cut out. Perrin as a main character and a POV is by far my favorite character because I really find his motivations to be understandable and relatable. But he and Fayil can't be the only ones in this series to hold it up for me. For being so many people's favorite book in this 14 book series, book four being their favorite in 14 books, I felt so discouraged when reading this because of Jordan's constant plot jumping and his meandering. Thank God for the Wheel of Time booktubers out there who make explanation videos because I really would not have understood the larger picture of this because of all this circular jumping and meandering. I think Robert Jordan has a really interesting idea and concept for this series but I find his writing to be extremely weak and I ended up giving this three stars. I will be continuing the series because I do want to know how it ends and I specifically started the series in order to read the books that Brandon Sanderson wrote. I have this goal to read everything Brandon Sanderson's ever written. This is a part of it so if I want to get there have to continue the series. And that's it. Those are all of the books I read in the month of September. If you've read any of these books, please let me know down below what you thought about them. Did you like them? Did you hate them? Let me know. If you would like to follow me on any of my other social medias, I do leave a link down below to my Twitter, Goodreads, and Instagram if you would like to follow me there. And of course, because it is the end of the video, please do not forget to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. Tell you every time, but it does wonders for my channel. It makes me feel really good. And that's it. I never know how to end these things. So I will see you next time, okay? Bye! Bye.